When one speaks of rebellion and the spirit of defiance in the heart of Massachusetts, the Boston Tea Party of 1773 often takes center stage, a bold act that fanned the flames of revolution. Yet, this iconic event was not without precedent. Let us turn back the pages to an even earlier chapter of resistance, where the first sparks of rebellion were struck in the young colony. This moment in history is called the Boston Revolt of 1689. In 17th century England, the Puritans faced a rigid Anglican orthodoxy that stifled their beliefs and dictated their worship. But in the New World, specifically in the Massachusetts Bay Colony, they sought to build a new society, a city upon a hill, where they could practice their faith freely, govern themselves and create a haven for pure worship. The Puritans established a semblance of self-rule unprecedented in the 17th century. Each man in the community had a voice at the town meeting, where they cast their votes on local laws and elected representatives, a stark contrast to the top-down governance they left behind. But their city upon a hill came crumbling down in 1686. King James II sought to consolidate control over the American colonies by forming the Dominion of New England. It merged the colonies of Connecticut, Massachusetts Bay, Plymouth, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, New York, and East and West Jersey into a single political unit. This vast territory was to be ruled by a single governor, Sir Edmund Andros, a stern military man appointed by the king. Andros was quick to alienate the colonists with various heinous acts, such as disregarding local representation invalidating land titles and forcing the Anglican church onto the mostly Puritan populace. The religious leaders of Boston attempted to address their problems with Andros via back channels. They gathered in secret and agreed to send prominent pastor Increase Mather to England to press their case against Andros directly with King James. Dominion spies learned of the plot and attempted to stop Mather but the pastor successfully snuck out of Boston under disguise and boarded a ship for London in April 1688. Mather reached England in October and after meeting with James, the king promised to address the colony's concerns. However, the king never got the chance to fulfill his promise as he was deposed in November and replaced by his son-in-law, William of Orange, in a nearly bloodless revolution called the Glorious Revolution. The new king became William III and co-ruled with his wife Mary, James II's daughter. With all the chaos in England, Increase Mather was making little headway in his mission, and the frustration in Boston was building up to a more aggressive course of action. In April 1689, news of King James's ouster made its way to the colonies, while Governor Andros was on a military campaign in Maine. He tried to silence the news, but soon, as Andros wrote to one of his commanders, There is a general buzzing among the people, great with expectation of their old charter. Andros rushed back to Boston to quell the growing unrest, but he was unable to get back before hundreds of militia streamed into the town and began arresting Dominion officials. Andros took refuge at Fort Mary in the Boston Harbor and weighed his options. There was but one British royal warship anchored in Boston, HMS Rose, captained by John George. Captain George went ashore to ascertain what was going on, and he was immediately arrested and taken into custody. More militia troops entered the city, and Governor Andros found himself trapped in Fort Mary. The next day, as his options of escape had dwindled, Governor Andros surrendered to the rebels. He was marched under guard to meet with a council of the rebel leadership, led by former Governor Simon Bradstreet. There, Andros was told that they must and would have the government in their own hands. The council then arrested Andros and made him a prisoner.
With the Dominion collapse, the New England colonies reverted to their former charters as if the Dominion never existed. After several months of confinement, Andros managed to escape by bribing the sentries with liquor, but he was duly recaptured in Rhode Island. He was held for another 10 months before being shipped off to England for trial. The colonies continued to operate on their own for another three years before King William created a new charter, calling for an appointed governor and religious toleration. The leaders of the revolt, including Bradstreet, were generally pardoned, a gesture to ease tensions and foster cooperation with the new regime. The Boston Revolt of 1689 was a harbinger of the spirit that would come to define the American character. The defiance displayed in Boston echoed down the years, resonating with the actions of those who would orchestrate the Boston Tea Party almost a century later, and ultimately the American Revolution. Thank you for watching this moment in history. If you like this episode, please like and subscribe.